to come through for you. He's willing if only you believe it. If only you believe it, he's willing to do it for you. Hallelujah. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of everything that you made available for us by your dying on the cross. In your dying, Jesus, you saved us. When you were buried in the tomb, oh, you carried our sins far away. But then you rose again on the third day and you justified us freely forever. And this is the hope and faith that we have that you're coming back for us. And dear God, you enable us to remain, to, you sustain us in your salvation by way of the Holy Spirit. You give us new strength and new hope. You have taken everything that plagues us away. You have renewed us, O oh God, and renewed our mindsets. And so we believe today that as we partake these emblems, O oh God, we are taking in us, dear God, the broken body of Jesus Christ that avails wholeness for us in our bodies, in our families, O oh God, in our marriages, and our relationships, in our land, Kenya. We receive the wholeness, the abundant life of Jesus. And dear God, as we take the cup, we are receiving the fullness of life that is found in the flowing blood of Jesus. We decree and declare healing and salvation salvation and deliverance and breaking of chains in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that dear God we are not falling that we are rising again our hope is rising our faith is being stirred up we are believing in you yet one more time restoration is coming into our homes and into our land into the church of Jesus Christ as we do this we believe that you are doing a new thing we open up our eyes to behold it that you're making rivers in the desert place and highways in the wastelands in the name of the Lord Therefore, we receive it in faith in Jesus' name. Let's take the bread together and the cup. And if you would just rise to your feet and lift your hands and lift your faith and worship the King in this house. Come on, worship him. Worship is good. Time is good. We bless the name of the Lord. If you are visiting us for the very first time, you have never been here before. Very much, please be seated. Bishop and Mama, from the depths of my heart, thank you so much for the opportunity given to me to be part of the service today. And through you, the entire elders and deacons, pastors and the entire leadership, thank you. I'm more than humbled and grateful to finally stand on this pulpit. I am thankful to Dr. Pio who facilitated my coming here. May the good Lord bless him and to all of you who have come for this service. My prayer is that the good Lord Almighty shall just speak to you and bless you in a very, very special way. As Bishop was saying, this is a divine moment for me. Uh, Bishop, my wife, said many things. You are right, she said many things. The conference that uh, Bishop was talking about, some ladies came from our church all the way from Zambia to here. They were well looked after. They were very well looked after and they've never forgotten that. And my wife said, out of the many gifted people, out of the many international people that were there, Bishop picked upon me, that's my wife, to share something. And that has never left her. And from that day, I felt indebted to this church. And I'm so glad today that I'm here to pay back that debt in a small way. <laughs> Truly. In Jesus' mighty name. And so thank you once again for coming. This morning, I'm just going to continue what I started in the morning. Uh, it's something that I do in one session, but I've split it in two. I did the first part in the first service, and I'm going to do the second part in this service. And so the first few minutes, I'm just going to just recap and summarize what I said in the first service so that at least we can be at the same level as much as is possible. Amen. And so I was saying, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, there are many things that he did. And then one of them is to work a work in us that shall cause us to become what I want to call supernatural wonders. So that you know, when people look at us and what we are doing, 
they shall be able to say, God has done something in this life. And so, you shall be a wonder. You shall be a marvel. You shall be a spectacle. Hallelujah. You know, even in heaven, where we are going, you're going to be a wonder. Let me just go around that a little bit. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ left to glory, came on this earth and became a man. He became you and me. To use our language of weddings, he joined himself to us. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. And he pledged to be one with us. Ah. And we have been celebrating that fact in the communion service. Now, let me have Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5, please. IT team. When God created man, the hierarchy in creation was like this. Let me have three men, please. The men of what? What are your names again? Men of honor? Uh, let me have three man enough men, please. Just three of you. Ah, thank you. I thank God for that program. Bishop is great. So, let us read together verse 4 of Psalm 8. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visit him. Verse 5. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Now, just imagine Papa here is God, the God class. That is the highest level in the hierarchy of creation. Now, at the beginning, the Bible says you have made man a little lower than the angels. What is man? A little lower than? So, after God comes angels. Right? And then after angels comes man. Now, when is the Lord Jesus Christ? One more man enough, please. One more man enough, man. Thank you. He shall represent the Lord Jesus Christ and he looks like him. The Lord Jesus Christ was in this class, the number one class. And so there was a conference in heaven. Who is going to go down to redeem man? Who is going to take the sacrifice, give the sacrifice as it were, to save man? Let me just do some uh, dramatizing. Abraham tried to stand up. I am going to go down to redeem humanity. As Abraham was walking, they began to murmuring. Mm, 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 mm. You were a liar. You, you told a lie. You can't die for fellow liars. A liar cannot die for other liars. Remember Abraham told a lie? He said, this is my sister. And so all the other angels says, no, a fellow liar can't die for fellow liars. Sit down, Abraham. Quiet. Who shall go down to save man? Somebody came from the congregation with a guitar. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. Who was that? David tried to start. There was even greater noise. Oh, 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 you, 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 you. Can an adulterer die for feather? No, you are an adulterer, you. An adulterer cannot die for fellow adulterers. So quickly, David put on brakes. Put reverse gear, went and sat down. To cut the long story short, finally, the Lord Jesus stood up and said, I will go. You, yes, I will go. There was silence in heaven. So the Lord Jesus 
left this position, went down, 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 and came to Zimmerman. And found you. What is your name? Karyuki? And? Harriet. And he said, I will become a part of you. I will take your sin. Your badness, I shall take it upon myself. Your wrong, I take it. And my good, I give you. My blessing, I give you. Now, spiritually speaking, that was a union that was made. In theology, it's called hypostatic union. And so Jesus joined, join your hands, men of men. Huh? Joined himself to man. Uh -huh. Now let me use modern English. He was welded. Arc welding. There was a spiritual arc welding machine. That came and welded. And made them one. So that now. <laughs> when Jesus on that third day. He rose again. And ascended to the father. Ascended here Jesus. I don't leave him. What happened? He went with a man. He went with a man. And man overtook the angels. <laughs> and saw so that because of what Jesus did, the hierarchy now has changed. It is God, you number two. Ah, ah you don't believe me. Man in Christ is now in the number two position. Uh -huh. And now it is God, Christian man, angels are below you. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. So now I'm talking about becoming a wonder. So now let me just dramatize this a little bit. So in heaven, around the throne of God, because of this change in hierarchy, man will be nearer God, come near God. Uh -huh. Angel, come behind the man. So, man is nearer to God because of Jesus Christ. Where Jesus is ruling, man is ruling. Where Jesus is seated far above principality and power, you are there. Hey! Where Jesus is stepping on everything, you're also stepping. So now, these angels, uh -huh, because of man, they're asking themselves, who are these characters called men? How come we, where did they come from? All along, we were higher than them. We were shining out. Now, what has made now them come nearer to God? It was the death of our Lord and our Savior. Christ Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He is who has lifted up. And now even in heaven, we are a wonder. Even in heaven, angels are wondering, who are these characters who God loved so much? Hallelujah. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please be seated, men. Hallelujah. And so you are a wonder. In the morning, we were saying a wonder is a marvel. It's a spectacle. In Zambia, we are home to what is called one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Victoria Falls. Men come from all over the world, China, England, America, everywhere to see the Victoria Falls. And I pray one day you are coming there also. Ah, I didn't hear you. Now, your neighbor looks like they don't believe me. <laughs> Tell them for me, Bishop is talking about you. <laughs> May God give you that grace. So, dearly beloved, in the same way that men come from everywhere to come and see the Victoria Falls, I pray that grace shall be released today to cause you to become such a wonder that men shall come from everywhere. Every part of the world, they shall come to Zimmerman to come and see what God is doing here. To come and see how you are excelling in the work of Almighty God. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. May God make you a supernatural wonder 
in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. And so against that background we are going to read Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. And together we shall read verse 18 and 19. Proverbs chapter 30. Verse 18 and 19. Glory be to Jesus. Bear with me, those of you who are not here in the first service. I pray this short introduction shall give you some idea of what we're trying to say. Then I'll build it up from there. Are we there? Together? They are. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Grace and anoint now the proclamation of this, your word, to the honor and the glory of your name. The building, dear Father God, of this, your people. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. These are examples of what I want to call inexplicable motion. Moving in a mysterious way. The ego, many of us sometimes mistake the ego for that bird, black and white bird outside. Even a hawk. Sometimes we mistake an ego for a hawk. An ego is a big bird. Some of them across the wings, they can be four meters. This span, double this span, when it spreads itself. It's a huge bird. And dearly beloved, how does it lift itself from the ground? And when it flies, when the Bible says the way of an eagle in the air, it's not that flying of flapping wings. Uh -uh. It's that mode which in the Bible is called mounting. It is just gliding. It is not putu putu kicking and struggling. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That is what makes it majestic. What do you call that a small blue bird? In the, that a small, small blue bird, any small bird? Such, eh? Such. Am I right? Such, eh? Yeah, it's a sparrow, but in Swahili. Such, eh? What is it called? What's the small bird in Swahili? Saja. Kaja. Okay, whatever. The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is... So I declare a saja. <laughs> These my small bears with small is put to put to put to put to make a lot of noise. An ego doesn't fly like that. It soars. Dearly beloved, majestically, as the wind is coming, it just changes the angle of its wing. It goes higher. It changes the angle. It goes lower. Without nothing. And that is what makes it majestic. Hallelujah. And also the next thing now is a serpent on a rock. Dearly beloved, there is no friction between the stomach or the tummy. I'm speaking like an, an African. Stomach. You know, in every African language, this is called stomach. But in English, stomach is inside, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm an African, you can bear with me. There is no friction between the stomach of a snake and the surface of a rock. To put it in physics language, the coefficient of static friction between the stomach or the tummy of a snake and the surface of the rock is a zero. In short, there is no grip. But even without a grip, somehow or other, that snake moves and is on the top. May God give you that grace in the name of Jesus. And move in such a way that people shall wonder, how are you moving, my son? May businesses grow exponentially here to the extent that people shall ask you how. 
in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, a ship floats on the water. And by the grace of Almighty God, it stays on top of that water, no matter the wind, no matter the wave, until it reaches its destiny. And so, dearly beloved, the fourth way is the way of a man or a woman. I told you that one in the first service. That one is very complicated. The laws of falling in love and out of love are very complicated. And so I'm not going to attempt to go there. Only to say that when a man is in love, all science disappears. <laughs> when I first met my wife, I was what is called a district bishop. I was a bishop in charge of a province. I fell in love. <laughs> I forgot that I was a bishop. I used, to I used to invite myself to that church where she was every Sunday. <laughs> and the people did not know what was taking me there every Sunday. They thought I loved them very much. <laughs> Naturally, I'm a very impatient person. But all of a sudden, when I was in love, patience came from nowhere. My wife would tell me, would agree, we shall meet at 11 hours. I would be there at 10.45. <laughs> Waiting patiently. When, she comes, when 11 hours comes, nowhere to be seen, I'm still waiting. Ten minutes later, I'm waiting. She comes one hour late, I'm waiting. And when she comes one hour late, all she has to say, I'm sorry, Gaty. And I would say, no, that's fine, honey, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but now, after 30 years of marriage, I tell her, if you are late, I will leave you. Hallelujah. And so we shall concentrate, dearly beloved, on those three things. The way an eagle flies in the air, the way a serpent moves on a rock, and the way a ship moves in the sea. Now, dearly beloved, as you go higher in life, education, or anything else, you will find that at the top, the laws that govern everything are the same. Dearly beloved, the way an eagle moves in the air, is the same way a fish moves in the water. Is the same way a snake slithers on the rock. I can put it in another language. In the same way that a fish swims in water, an eagle swims in air. A snake flies in the rock. <laughs> uh -huh. A ship flies in the water. So once you get the laws that govern motion, you can move anywhere, in any surface, in any territory. You are not going to be limited by the type of territory. When you are in the air, you are going to fly. When you are in the water, you shall float. When you are in the rocks, you shall slither. I declare upon you in Jesus' name, there is no territory that shall slow you down. There is no territory you shall, not fail, you shall fail to overcome. Whatever your day is, you will overcome. If it is in the air, you will fly. If it is in the rocks, you will slither. If it is in the water, you will sail. Come on, receive that grace in Jesus' name. Nothing shall limit you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether your business is in Nairobi, whether it is in Lusaka, whether it is in Cairo, it shall succeed using the same laws. Come on in Jesus' name. I said, come on in Jesus' name. I heard from a bishop that you have a church in London. Did I hear correctly? There is a church in London. I'm told you have a church in Congo. So whether you're in Congo, whether you're in London, and very shortly, <laughs> let me stop there. You're opening a church on the moon. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so the laws that govern are exactly the same. And so may God give you the understanding to know what makes things work. 
And dearly beloved, there is a law governing business. Once you understand that law, your business goes to another level. There is a law governing marriage. Once you understand that law, you go to the next level. There is a law governing ministry. Once you understand that law, you go to the next level. And now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to take something from this passage of scripture and quickly apply it to you. Now, there is a word that keeps coming in verse 19. That word is the way of an eagle. The way of a serpent. The way of a sheep. The way of a man. The way, the way, the way, the way. Now, the first meaning of that word way can be the road. Okay? The road that the eagle travels in the air. The road that the serpent treads on the rock. The road that the sheep treads in the sea and so on. That is also applicable. But it also refers to the principle. It refers to the method. It refers to the, help me with an English word, help me somebody, principle, process, pastor, another one, formula, great thinking, one more. I can't hear. Procedure. You are truly an international church. <laughs> Clap for yourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me tell your neighbor, we are an international church. <laughs> yes. And you proved it to me. So now, in the Bible, my time will not allow me, but the Bible distinguishes between the acts of God and the ways of God. Maybe let me just quote that. It might be important, that one. This you will find, dearly beloved. Let me just give it to you. In Psalm 103, verse 7. In Psalm 103, verse 7. Together the Bible says, Made his what? His what? His what? To whom? And his what? To who? So let me just amplify that a little bit. Moses knew the ways. The people knew the acts. So now to put that together, behind every act, there is a way. Uh -huh. Now to use your language here, behind every act, there is a process. There is a formula. There is a procedure, mama. One more word did I hear? Processor. There is a law. There is a principle. And so there is a principle governing the act. And so if you want to fully perform the act, what you must look for is there. Again, if you want the act, what must you have? If you want the act, what must you have? Yesterday, I was admiring this beautiful building. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. Church is very nice. Here, if you fail to preach, the pulpit is innocent. <laughs> mm -hmm. The carpet, you can't, because everything is... So, I was busy admiring this whole... Then I said to some of the pastors, I wish I could transplant this building and take it to Zambia and just plant it there. One of the pastors was quick to say, eh, 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 not so fast, not so fast, Bishop. One of them says, aha, to do this, you need to have the brains. You need the brains. You need, I'm just quoting exactly what she said. Brains, process, and the time. Now, to put it in today's language, me, I was only seeing the act. I do not know the way. 
I do not know the way when a bishop stands here and says, I used to tell you that a gift is a gift and I've changed now. No. Okay. That is part of the way. Uh -huh. All of these nice LED screens, this beautiful sound system, there is a way. And if you try to go into the act without understanding the way, you can have disaster. <laughs> the children of Israel have come from Egypt. Dearly beloved, they come before the Red Sea. Pharaoh is running after them. Moses stretches forth his rod and the Red Sea opens. Hey. Red Sea opens. Israel begins to go on a dry ground. Walking across. Hey, hey. Pharaoh says, Ata, say, These are chickens waiting to be slaughtered. These are just chickens I'm going to finish in one minute. Pharaoh wants to walk into an act whose ways <laughs> Pharaoh can't you ask yourself from the days of your grandfather where have you seen a sea open sea open before you Pharaoh and the Bible says dry ground one minute ago it was wet now it is dry Pharaoh, you can't ask yourself, how is this? And Pharaoh and his armies, dearly beloved, without understanding the way, try to walk in somebody's miracle without the principle, dearly beloved. The Bible says the water came upon them and consumed everybody. Anybody wants to walk in your miracle without understanding the God who has given you that miracle is going to drown. Hallelujah! They do not know where you have come from. They do not know where God brought you from. They don't understand where this pulpit is coming from. It is an act of Jehovah God. Is somebody hearing me? I said, is somebody hearing me? There was a group of boys called the sons of Skeva. They were watching very carefully how Paul was casting out devils. They heard him say, in the name of Jesus, come out. <laughs> and the devils came out. They said, oh, it is just a saying. <laughs> they saw the act, did not understand. They saw and did not understand. So they said, even us, we shall try it. <laughs> they went and found a demon possessed person and says in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches <laughs> the devil says Paul I know Jesus I know but who are you and laid hands upon them they disappeared in seven different directions they were trying to perform an act whose way they did not understand. I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you shall begin to understand the way behind that miracle, the way behind the business. May God give you more understanding to understand the way. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, please stand to your feet. Help me tell five people, don't just look at the act, understand the way. Don't just go for the act, understand the way. Understand the way, my daughter. Understand the way, my brother. In the name of Jesus. 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 There is a way for your marriage. There is a way for your business. There is a way for this church. There is a way for your ministry. There is a way for the men of impact. There is a way for the women. Come on. May God show you that way. May God show you that way. May this be the beginning of a new season in your life. May God give you a different understanding. Somebody shout, yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody raise your hands and clap your hands and say, hallelujah. Come on, the way is coming upon you. 
understanding is increasing. You are going to a new level in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may please be seated. Hey, let me quickly begin to move. You know, one of the things I'm learning here is to preach according to time. Where I come from, we preach until tomorrow. And I've only got seven minutes to go. <laughs> and I haven't even started. But I'm learning as I go back now, I shall also put a clock on the back. <laughs> so, as men looked at the ego, they began to ask, how does an ego fly? How does an ego fly? Men everywhere began to observe birds. We want to fly also as men. So now, what men began to do is they observed the birds that they used to flap their wings. And so men, and I'm talking about men now, in the history of flying, thought that birds fly because of flapping the wings. They did not understand the principle, what the bird was doing by flapping the wings. And so the first planes that they made looked like birds, which just used to flap things like this. But it did not work. Until there was a scientist called Bernoulli. Those of you who may remember your physics may remember him. But there was a scientist called Bernoulli who brought about what was called the Bernoulli principle. Now, let me just explain it very simply. It simply says the wings of a bird or any shape that has the shape of the wing of a bird when it moves through the air, the speed of the air on top of the... Thank God there's a plane on top. <laughs> Very prophetic. The wing of an aircraft is shaped in exactly the same way as the wing of a bird. It was Bernoulli who discovered that one. And so it is simply like this. When that shape of a wing moves through the air. The speed of the air on the top is greater than the speed of the air under the wing. Now, that difference in speed lifts it up. Do you say bus? How do you say finish in, in, in Swahili? Bus. Bus. Finish. That's an aeroplane. You have a thing shaped like a wing where the air on the top moves faster than the air beneath move that thing through the air and then because of that pressure difference, the thing will be lifted up. <laughs> mm. So, all a plane needs to do is to go on a runway and say, on your marks, get set, ready, go. It will start at zero, 10, 50, 100 kilometers per hour, 130, 140, it will reach a certain speed where, dearly beloved, the difference of those two airs will lift the plane up into the air because of the shape, because of the speed, because of the, because of the, because of the, because of the, one more time because of that, because of the speed. So it is made in such a way. I said, what? It is made? What is the Swahili word for making? Kutengeneza. So a plane, let me use African English, is not just chitengeneza, chitengeneza. It is not made, made. Mm -mm. It is made in a special way. It is made, shaped in a certain way. And in exactly the same way, dearly beloved, to cut this story short, you are not just Chitengeneza, Chitengeneza. You are made in a special way. When the Bible says you are not the tail, but you are the head, it means God has designed you to be in the air. God has designed you to be up there, dearly beloved. Listen to me, God's people, in Jesus' mighty name. When you come to church like this, your shape is being improved. As you listen to Bishop preach to you after Sunday after Sunday, he is shaping you. 
As you go for the cell meetings, you are being shaped. As you go for the women of impact, you are being shaped. As you join man of man, man enough, hallelujah. As you join man enough, you are being made man enough to be made man enough to fly in the air and not remain on the ground there. So I encourage you, pray. Seek the face of Almighty God. Continue coming to church. Don't miss services because as you are doing that, you are being shaped. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So all that a plane needs to do is to say, on your marks, get ready. It shall start running and it shall go in the air in exactly the same way. I want you to develop courage. I want you to develop faith, a child of Almighty God, to start moving. To start moving. Because as you start moving, because of your shape, you are going to find yourself in the air in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, let me quickly bring this to a close. Now, the Akiri, is that correct? The Akiri of the ego is this. Now, I told you an aeroplane has to move at a certain speed, eh? it will go in the air. The opposite is also true. If the plane is stationary and the wind comes at the right speed, even without the plane with no engines, it will go in the air. Hmm? <laughs> that is what the ego knows. The ego, when it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall new their strength, they shall Hunt up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. An eagle waits for air. It waits for the air in the right direction. It waits for the air at the right speed. And all it needs to do is wait for air. The air is coming. And so I want you to imagine an eagle by a cliff waiting for the air. These two my small birds, to my saga saga. They shall be there, putu, 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 putu. They are looking at the eagle, Mr. Eagle, what's wrong with you? You can't fly? You can't fly. Look at me. Me, I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying. The ego just says, wait. Wait, wait, wait. How do you say wait in Swahili? Lola? Noja. Noja, I wait. I'm waiting. That a small bird is showing off its wings. The ego says, Noja. Noja. My, Noja. Ngoja. Ngoja. My time is coming. My time is coming. And I want you to know in exactly the same way, there are people around you who have started before you. They started maybe ministry before you. They started a business before you. They started the marriage before you. And they are like those small birds, those two massagas who are telling me I'm flying, me I'm flying, I'm flying. But I'm telling you right now, you can look at every kasaga in your life and tell them, go jango, 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 jango. Dearly beloved, I'm telling you that like a small bird is going to get tired. It's going to get tired of flapping its wings. But the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. In that passage of scripture, you see three levels of motion. The Bible says they shall walk. What's the first level? Then they shall run. And then they shall mount up. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can see you progressing from the walking stage to the running stage. And finally you are going into the air in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> are you ready for the revelation now? In the same way, I said what? That 
an aeroplane after me? Is an aircraft? Say it again in the same way. That an aeroplane is an now get ready to tell your neighbor, you are a spirit craft. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. You also are a spirit craft. Hey, the Bible says, how do I walk? I walk in the spirit. How do I walk? I walk, I. And how do I pray? How do I pray? I pray in the spirit for this. And how do I fly? How do I run? And how do I dance? The eagle waits for the air. And dearly beloved, it is the air that carries it. It is the air that pushes it. That is why it doesn't get tired. I am telling you by the spirit of almighty God, get ready for the change of season and the Holy Ghost will begin to move. All you need to do is give yourself to the Holy Ghost. All you need to do is jump in the air and I'm telling you, you are going to go higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All of those to my little birds that were laughing at you saying, you, can you fly, can you fly? I declare today, you are going to start running my daughter. You are going to start running my son. And you are going to overtake her. everybody who started before you. You are going to go ahead of them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are a spirit crafter that is being propelled by this Holy Spirit. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? Hallelujah. Hmm. I used to have one big car. It had a very big engine. So one day I was driving to our capital city. So this car saga of a car. overtook me. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> so, I pressed that accelerator just enough to keep him at top speed. Let me just say 180. Mm. Because I knew that Kasaga maximum speed is 180. So, I kept at 180. Me, I'm just. How do I walk? I walk. And how do I pray? Meanwhile, him, his engine was at the top load. The temperature began to go up. Up and up. Then the car began to boil. I saw him parking opening the bonnet and start pouring water. That is happening to those who are in the head of you. <laughs> Hallelujah! May God Almighty give you grace to run like you've never run before. May God give you ability in your business to soar like you've never sown before. That you shall become a wonder. That the people around you shall ask you how, 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 how have you done it? Come on, receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please stand to your feet and tell five people. They are going to ask you how, 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 how. The answer is you've understood the way. You've understood the method. You've understood the principle.